welcome back to my channel. Today is another Meals for Maximum Weight Loss video. I'm going to show you guys a full day of meals. This is how I ate to lose 70 pounds and keep it off. I'm going to be going over calorie density a little bit more with you guys so you understand why you don't have to count calories with this method of eating. And I'm also going to go over my exercise, what it looked like during weight loss because I get a lot of questions about that as well as what it looks like on a daily basis for me now that I'm maintaining my weight. I'll also go over some of the tips and tricks you guys can implement to keep things simple and more sustainable so that you are successful long term. Now you guys have been asking for a maximum weight loss cookbook for a really long time so I have been working on one. It is almost done. I'm really excited about this one. It should be available end of October so I will keep you guys updated and I will let you know as soon as it's available. All right, let's get into the food. I just realized that I'm one of those people that needs to constantly be moving their hands when they talk. Or like when I stop like that, I just, I stop thinking. The things you realize when you see yourself on camera. Alright guys, so for this sweet potato bowl, I'm just going to take some sweet potatoes that I had cooked a few days ago. I like to cook all my sweet potatoes up for the week. And I'm just going to chop these up and toss them with a little apple pie spice and then roast them in the oven for like 10-15 minutes. And then I'll show you how I get the rest of the bowl put together. Alright, so now I'm just going to move this over to my parchment lined baking sheet. So I'm going to take a little of this apple pie spice. I'll just give it a sprinkle and a toss. And then I'm gonna pop it in the oven at 425 for about 15 minutes. All right, so while the potatoes are roasting up, I'm gonna cut up some of this Honeycrisp apple. I love Honeycrisp apples in the fall. They taste like cider to me. So I'm just gonna cube it up. So if you want, you could actually roast the apple with the sweet potatoes, but I like my apple to be crunchy and have a nice bite. I don't really love baked apples very much, so I like to have it raw in this bowl. All right guys, here's the sweet potato. It's nice and crispy. It's gonna be so good. All right guys, so here's the sweet potato. It's roasted and delicious. So now I'm just gonna add all of my apple. Now I'm maintaining my weight, so I add flaxseed in Dr. McDougall's program. He does have you eliminate all added nuts and seeds and other overt fats just to help with the weight loss process. Of course, if you're uncomfortable doing that, you can continue to add some flaxseed and nuts and seeds, just greatly reduce the amount if you're having trouble losing weight. Okay, so to this, I like to add a tablespoon or two of this gluten-free cereal because I love the crunch. I'll either add this one or I'll add some brown rice cereal. And I'm only adding, you know, like a tablespoon or two. But this vanilla one is seriously my favorite. And I find it at Walmart a lot cheaper than at the natural health food store. So I'll put that in and then I'm gonna add just a little splash of plant milk. Now on maximum weight loss, I did not use soy milk very often because soy milk is really high in fat. So I used this unsweetened almond milk because it's the lowest in fat that I've been able to find on the market. And so I just add just a little splash and then this is a really delicious and filling breakfast. Now, normally I have vegetables for my 50-50 plate. So I'll have an equal size serving of vegetables, but I hear a lot from you guys that, that some of you just cannot stomach vegetables in the morning. So you could also do a bowl of fruit as an option for the morning. And I will occasionally do this, especially during the summer, or sometimes you just wake up and you feel like having a big bowl of fruit with your breakfast. So that's also a really good option for breakfast for maximum weight loss. All right guys, this is seriously so delicious and it is so, so filling. So I hope you guys give it a try. Let me know what you think. And again, if you just like cannot stomach vegetables for breakfast, you've tried and tried and you just can't do it, then it is okay to do that 50% part of your plate as fruit. I love berries and I love melon. You can eat, and the thing about berries and melons is that you can eat a lot of volume of those two things 
for very little calories. They're very filling, they're full of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and tons of fiber. So don't worry if you just cannot put vegetables down for breakfast, you can always do a big bowl of fruit. Oh, and before I eat this, I'll show you again those two cereals. I just find them at the health food stores. This one is from Whole Foods and it's just like brown rice cereal. And again, I don't like eat bowls of that because it is like a lot more calorie dense and during maximum weight loss, Dr. McDougall outlines in his book to stay away from things like cereals and try to eat whole, whole grains like oatmeal, things like that. So I'm just using them for a little topping and a little crunch. This one is my absolute favorite. This one is gluten-free. And this one I find significantly cheaper at Walmart. So if your Walmart carries it, then that's a plus. You'll save like a couple dollars, which is a lot. So I will try to find Amazon links for you guys for those as well as the almond milk in case you haven't seen this one, but it's pretty popular. I see it everywhere. I see it at Walmart. I see it at the normal grocery store, but I will try to find links. You guys really like your links, so I'm trying to get better about that. I'm gonna eat my food and then we're gonna talk about calorie density. All right, so I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about the principles behind calorie density because I get a lot of questions about, you know, do I count calories with eating this way? How big of plates do I use? How big or small are my portions? I also get asked a lot if it's okay to eat your, your non-starchy vegetables separately from your starchy vegetables or is it important to eat them at the same meal? Because a lot of you guys ask if you can eat your non-starchies first and then when you're hungry again, then eat your starchy vegetables. So I'm gonna quickly go over all of that. So as most of you know, I follow the work of Dr. John McDougall. He wrote The Starch Solution and I will link this book and his program for maximum weight loss in the description box. If you guys are new to this lifestyle or you're trying to implement maximum weight loss or you just are having a horrible time losing weight on a plant-based diet, I highly recommend you first read The Starch Solution. It is a very comprehensive, easy to understand book explaining all of the pros of a high starch, low fat, plant-based diet and all of the science to support it. So I strongly recommend you start with this book. Dr. McDougall is my hero. I've read all the books. I'm like a nerd for this stuff. I've read Dr. Greger's books, Dr. Neil Barnard's books. He's another one of my favorites. Um, Dr. Furman's books. I love these doctors. They're all very intelligent and have, and have a lot of really important things to say in their work. I just found Dr. McDougall to be the easiest to understand, as well as Dr. Barnard. He's really easy to understand too. But I found Dr. McDougall's diet approach to be the most sustainable for myself. So check out the starch solution for maximum weight loss, which is what this video, what this series, what this playlist is all about is based off of the principles that Dr. McDougall outlines in the McDougall program for maximum weight loss. Again, I will link this in the description box for you guys. But here he basically breaks things down and makes it really simple to understand that if you are having a hard time losing weight, even on a high starch, low fat plant-based diet, then there are a couple things that you can adjust and a specific way to arrange your plate so that you can be successful in getting the weight off that you wanna get off. So if you haven't watched the videos on how exactly to get weight loss with the Maximum Weight Loss Program, then make sure you watch those videos in my playlist. I will link them for you guys below as well because I go into great detail and depth about how exactly to do this. Okay, so as most of you know, I do a 50-50 plate, which is 50% non-starchy vegetables and 50% starchy vegetables. So in the Maximum Weight Loss Program, he does have you cut out all refined foods. So no crackers, cereals, breads. You really wanna keep those to like a very minimum to just like once in a while treats during weight loss because those things have a higher calorie density, which means that they have more calories per pound than whole foods like whole fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and whole starches like potatoes, beans, legumes, starchy squashes, things like that. So for example, potatoes, you could eat a whole pound of potatoes for only 400 calories, whereas a pound of bread has about 1,500 calories per pound. And it is really easy to eat a pound of bread before you think there's no way that I would eat a pound of bread. It is 
so easy to eat a pound of bread. I am telling you, once I didn't think that I was like overeating things like whole grain bread and whole grain cereals, but as soon as I started implementing the 50-50 plate, the half non-starchy vegetables and the half starchy vegetables, like weight just started melting off of me. Okay, so real quick, just in a nutshell, I wanna model for you guys how calorie density works without going into all the details of it so that you can understand how to lower the calorie density of your meals so that you can effectively lose weight and keep it off. And you can do this without having to weigh, measure, and account for every single little calorie and put it in chronometer. I mean, you can if you want, but I'm, I'm just not one to deal with it. So let's take this big bowl of pasta, for example. So I have a huge bowl of whole wheat pasta that has 700 calories, and then I add 100 calories of low fat or non fat marinara sauce. So now I have this large bowl of whole wheat pasta and sauce for 800 calories. So to reduce the calorie density of the meal, all I need to do is remove half of that starchy pasta and replace it with a ton of non-starchy vegetables like broccoli. And I'll add a little cheese sauce on there, which adds like very little calories. But what I have just done is I have reduced the calorie density of this bowl of pasta in half. So now I still get to eat the same volume of food for half the calories. And if I'm consistent with each meal, building it like this 50-50, 50% starches and 50% non-starchy vegetables, then I will see weight loss, which is exactly what happened for me. So I will forever be grateful to Dr. McDougall and Dr. and Dr. Doug Lyle and Jeff Novick for all the work that they've done to teach people about calorie density and how to build their plates because this is what worked for me. I struggled so much to get weight off, to keep weight off. So when I read the material and started implementing it in my life, it was like magic. And I've now been able to maintain my weight for a couple years and, and feel healthier than I ever have. Alright guys, so for my vegetables for lunch, I'm going to cut up some squash and roast it. I'm going to show you guys how I season it. It's super easy and super filling. Alright, so real quick, I'm just going to toss them into this bowl and then I'm going to season them. Alright, so I'm going to use a little salt. A little garlic powder and some nutritional yeast and this gives it kind of like a cheesy crust it's really good my friend high carb Hannah told me to do that and I love it all right so now I'm just gonna spread it out on a parchment lined baking sheet all right so now I'm gonna roast them at 425 for about 20 to 30 minutes Okay, so the zucchini is in the oven. It's almost done roasting. So for the starch side of my 50-50 plate today, I'm gonna have some rice. Obviously brown rice is a more nutritional choice. It will fill you up for longer. It has more fiber, more nutrients, but we just do not like brown rice in our household. We have tried and tried. I'm having white rice because I really love white rice. I've also heated up some leftover pinto beans that I made in my Instapot and I will put in the description box exactly how I do it. They come out really tasty. I like it a lot more than just canned beans, but do what's easiest for you. Now, this isn't like a measured amount or anything. It's just what was left over. And I hid this in the back of the fridge last night so that I could have it for my lunch today. Because if I didn't hide it, then the kids or the husband were gonna get to it. And it's not enough to share, as you can see. And don't judge me because I hide food for my kids. I know most of us mamas have done it. I know most of us when we have a treat that's in a wrapper have to hide in our pantry or in our closet to open it up because our kids have like supersonic hearing for that stuff. If they hear me opening something that has a wrapper, like they appear out of nowhere at my sides and they're like, mom, mama, mommy, what is that? Can I have one? Is it a treat? Is there more? So <laughs> we do what we have to to survive. So I'm just gonna put some of this on. And then I'm gonna squeeze some lime on. Now I make all of my beans and rice and potatoes 
for the week on Sunday. I don't like to be cooking every day, so I batch prep everything. I will link that video in the description box for you guys. So today I'm gonna be super plain because I don't feel like putting a lot of effort into it. You guys can add salsa, tomatoes, corn, whatever you want. But today it's just gonna be rice, beans, lime, and some pickled onions. I will link this video as well. It's super simple. If you haven't tried pickled onions with Mexican food, oh my gosh, it is so, so good. So I'm gonna put some pickled onions on there. It gives it a ton of flavor. And then of course I'm gonna add some hot sauce. I cannot live without hot sauce. Now, most days I'd probably add about a quarter to a half of an avocado on here, but that's because I'm maintaining my weight. So if you're trying to lose weight, again, Dr. McDougall does recommend cutting out all added fats just during weight loss. You do what you want. If you are currently trying to lose weight and wanna keep some fats in, then just reduce it. If you would normally have like half an avocado a day, cut it down to maybe a quarter of an avocado a day and see how that goes. Okay, so my zucchini is done. Look how gorgeous that looks. It's gonna be really yummy. All right guys, there is my squash. That's not all of it. There's still some on the tray, which is there in case I want seconds. If I'm making this for everybody, then I just make a huge tray of zucchini. But there you go, and that is what my 50-50 plate looks like today. All right guys, so here is my lunch. Yes, it's a big plate of food, but I'm hungry. And again, I just do the 50-50 plate. That is how I continue to maintain my weight. When you start eating a 50-50 plate, generally you're taking in less calories than you're burning, so that's why you're losing weight. And then when you stop losing weight, that means your body has found the balance that it wants for weight maintenance. So if you wanna continue losing weight, you can add more non-starchy vegetables and eat a little bit less starch, or to maintain your weight, just keep eating eating the 50-50 plate, which is what I do. This is how I maintain my weight. I did end up chopping up some cilantro. I decided I wasn't too lazy to do that. So I chopped up some cilantro and put that on there. So I'm gonna eat this and then I'm gonna talk to you guys about what my exercise looks like, what it looked like during weight loss and what it looks like now on a daily basis. And I'm gonna go over some tips that you guys can implement to help make things easier on you and more sustainable. All right, so let's talk exercise. I get messages about this all the time. You guys wanna know how much I exercised to lose the 70 pounds, what does my exercise routine look like now to maintain it and keep it off. And I don't know if this is gonna disappoint any of you. I hope it actually encourages you, but during weight loss, all I did was walk. I took a 30 to 40 minute brisk walk every single day because I needed a break. I needed a break from the extreme exercise routine routines, from the extreme dieting. I just needed a break from all of it. I had heard Dr. Neil Barnard talk about how good walking is for you and if that's all you can manage for exercise then that's great. Just do it. So I walked every day for 30 to 40 minutes. Really guys what it comes down to is your diet. If your diet is really good and you're really consistent, you're not gonna need to kill yourself at the gym or running or whatever to lose the weight. Now, if you like exercising a ton, go for it. Like, enjoy it. Nowadays, I'm a pretty active person in general. I love to hike and mountain bike and walk but I don't get to go on a rigorous hike every day. So I do try to make sure that I get in enough walking in a day just to stay active, to keep my body moving and young. I do do some body work, but I, there's no extreme routines. I just like to keep my core tight and I do some body weight work, but really the bulk of my activity for the day comes in the form of walking. So I did go ahead and purchase this step counter. This was really cheap. I like looked at the Fitbits and I just like <laughs> couldn't bring myself to spend the money. But if you've got a Fitbit, that's great. Or you want to spend the money on a Fitbit, go for it. I paid like $27 for this one on Amazon and it seems to work really well. It counts my steps and it does what I need it to do. So so I got this and I do make a goal of hitting at least 10,000 steps a day with hopefully the goal of 12,000 steps a day. Now you can do this, like if you have a smartphone, there's apps that will count your steps. You just have to carry your phone with you. Just make sure you're being 
active. I think 10,000 steps, I think is a really good goal. If you're a lot more sedentary than that, then I would say maybe start with a goal of 7,000 steps. You know, enlist a buddy or a spouse to do this with you. My walking buddy is High Carb Hannah and she lives in another state, but we text each other our steps for the day like oh man i only got in you know nine thousand and i gotta go get another thousand before the end of the day or whatever she's she has like a fifteen thousand step a day goal which i still haven't hit that i don't know how she does that so i go for a hour walk every morning and that gives me about seven thousand steps so i don't know where she's getting fifteen thousand steps but the girl is getting it so anyway the point is be active, enlist a buddy. You don't have to be in the same state. Like I said, Hannah's in a different state. We just encourage each other to meet our goals and it can be a really good way to stay active. So I hope you guys weren't waiting to hear about some magical routine that will help you lose weight. Other than walking, maybe it'll be a relief to you to know that you don't have to like start running or sign up for a triathlon or whatever that you can just start walking just make time to get that walk in every day i know for me because i'm a busy mom if i don't get my walk in first thing in the morning it's not happening because then i always say like okay I'll, I'll go in the afternoon and then i get busy in the afternoon and then the evening comes and i'm like and i've had my dinner and i'm about to have my dessert and then and then the couch is looking really comfortable and i want to sit and put my feet up so I have to get my walk done in the morning. But figure out what's gonna work for you, do what makes you happy. Again, keep this journey about health and not just about the skinny. Now, as far as tips go for making this lifestyle as easy as possible and as sustainable as possible, my biggest tip is food prep. If I don't prep for the week, we fall apart during the week. I have to, every Sunday, I take the couple hours and I make all our rice, all our potatoes. I make all of my oatmeal for the week. I make any of the sauces that I want, mostly cheese sauce and soy ginger sauce for vegetables. And I have that ready to go. I always have tons of fruit available because I eat a lot of fruit for snacks and for dessert. And my family grab those for snacks and dessert as well. So be prepared. That's the saying that if you fail to prepare, then you prepare to fail is so true you have to take the little bit of time to prepare so that it's easier on you now if you can afford things like pre-made rice like you can buy rice that's already steamed and frozen you can get it at the normal grocery store then do that load up on things that are already done for you anything to make things easier especially as you transition so that you can be successful long term now I get asked a lot if I make two separate meals because you know it just seems exhausting to have to feed myself this way and then have to make a whole separate meal for my family and let me tell you something mama bear does not make two meals i make one meal everything that i am showing you guys today my family eats i'm just showing you in single portions for the purpose of this video but anything that i'm making for me my family eats now my kids don't need to lose weight and they're not eating a 50 50 plate they're eating like a 90 10 plate you know like 10 percent veggies i try to get them to eat more veggies but but they eat the same meal, they just add a lot more avocado to their meal. They'll add some nut butters and some nuts and seeds. They'll have some dried fruits. With their burrito bowls, they'll have a tortilla with it. Whereas I stay away from the higher calorie dense foods like dried fruit and maple syrup and nut butters and nuts and seeds and large amounts of avocado. They eat more freely from it because they're children, they don't have weight problems and they're growing. And my husband is the same, like he just, doesn't seem to go up in weight. So, lucky him. And then I get questions about, well, how did you get your family to eat this way? Well, when mama bear's the only one that cooks in the house, they either eat or they go hungry. Cause I know my husband and he's only cooked for me twice in 17 years. He's not gonna cook. So, so. but there are days during the week where I'll make things that are more exciting like spaghetti pie or mac and cheese and things like whole grain pasta are still pretty low in calorie density but it's still a good idea to not eat those things like every day of the week now during weight maintenance i eat whole grain pasta once or twice a week i have no trouble maintaining my weight the only thing that affects my weight is when i start eating more fats if i start overdoing it on the avocado and i start 
having some nut butter here and nut butter there and a little bit of nuts turns into a handful here and a handful there that's when I start to see my weight going up so as long as I you know keep my avocado consumption moderate which is about a quarter to a half an avocado a day for me and my nut and seed intake very low to moderate then I'm fine and when I go out to restaurants like I'll get stuff that has oil in it it's not the end of the world but during weight loss I was really good about it I was really consistent and that is my biggest tip for you guys is to be consistent if you are consistent then time will pay the bill and you'll be well on your way to reaching your goal Okay, dinner time. So for the vegetable, I'm gonna make roasted cabbage. If you guys saw my latest How I Eat in a Day video, you guys saw all the cabbage we harvested from the garden. So we have been eating a ton of cabbage. So I've been trying to think of new ways to eat it and I decided to try roasting it. I had never tried roasted cabbage before, but I figured I roast everything else. Might as well try it and see how it turns out. And it was amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. So I'm just gonna chop the cabbage up. This is like currently my kids favorite vegetable. They are loving the roasted cabbage. And then I'll throw this back into the compost pile. All right, so all I'm gonna do is get this spread out on a parchment lined baking sheet. And I kind of separate them just cause I want them to get nice and roasted. All right, so I have the cabbage on here and I have the oven preheating to 425 because that's what I'm gonna roast it at. So now all I'm gonna do is season it with salt and garlic powder. So here's the salt and a little garlic powder. And that is it. Now I'm gonna throw that into the oven at 425 and let it roast for about 30 minutes. Okay, so while the cabbage roasts, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get like the scalloped potatoes put together. These are already cooked potatoes. I need to steam some more. I usually have to steam potatoes twice a week because we go through them pretty fast. But I love having steamed potatoes ready to go because it makes meal prep so much easier. And all I do is steam them in my Instapot. I throw them in there with a cup and a half of water and I hit the steam setting for 20 minutes. All right, so all I'm gonna do is cut these potatoes nice and thin, and then I'm just gonna lay them in here nice and pretty if I can stop breaking them. All right, so I actually only need two potatoes because this is just for me. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season it with a little salt and a little garlic powder. Garlic salt is great, that's actually my favorite, but I am out. All right, and then to this I'm gonna add some crushed rosemary. It is so savory and delicious. I just like, I just love rosemary. I like a lot, so do what you like. So now I'm gonna put some cheese sauce on top and then pop this in the oven. So I make a double batch of cheese sauce every week because we go through it. We love it. Now this has a really small amount of cashews in it. It did not really affect my weight loss, I don't think at all, but if you want to omit the cashews, then go ahead and leave them out and it still bakes up and is really good when you do that, when you make it as a fat-free cheese. So I'm gonna pop this in the air fryer at 425 for about 30 minutes. I've never put these in here before. Let's see how it goes. It's the air frying basket. I'll just put it in there. Just to air fry. Doing a 425 for 30 minutes. All right. Ooh, all right. Oh my gosh, it came out so good. Look at that. guys the roasted cabbage is so so good make sure you give it a try we love this stuff we just eat platefuls and platefuls of it so I'm gonna eat this first as part of my 50 50 plate and then I'm gonna eat these beautiful potatoes look at that guys 
It's perfect. I think I'm gonna make them in the air fryer from now on. I've been making them in the oven and they don't get this crispy looking. They're still excellent in the oven if you don't have an air fryer, but since I have one, <laughs> I think I'm gonna do that from now on. So I'm gonna eat this. I won't need seconds. I've been eating this a lot and potatoes are extremely filling. So I know that this will be more than enough. I don't even know if I'll get through all of this, but I am going to put some ketchup on it and I don't buy fancy sugar-free ketchup. My friend Lamar showed me a ketchup that looks really interesting that doesn't have any sugar in it and he swears it tastes just like ketchup. I might give that one a try if I can find it and if I can find it and it's good, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise, I just buy the organic Hanes, Heinz, whatever. I get it at Costco. It's like a delicious little chip. Mmm, this is so good. All right, so for dessert tonight, I'm just gonna have these apple slices with cinnamon. It's really good. My mom always gave us apple slices with cinnamon and sugar growing up, and I honestly don't miss the sugar at all. It almost tastes like there is sugar on them just with the cinnamon. But I am telling you that Honeycrisp apples are where it's at. They taste like cider. They are my absolute favorite apple. So yeah, that's gonna be dessert. Now, as far as snacks, I didn't show you guys any snacks today because I didn't snack. It really depends on the day whether I snack or not. There are no rules. Snack if you want to, you know, don't snack if you don't want to. But if you snack, you should keep it to things like fresh vegetables and fresh fruit. If you're gonna eat fresh vegetables and you're pretty hungry, then try some oil-free hummus with them to help keep you until the next meal. Other, if you find that you're needing to snack a ton, then just try to eat more at your main meal if it bothers you to stop and snack. That's really the only reason I don't snack is because I don't like stopping to snack. But on vacation, when I'm laying around, I'm snacking all the time. So really, it's mostly like, the laziness thing for me. So do what you want. If you're hungry, then have a snack. If you're not, don't. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for me today. Remember to keep this journey about health and not just about the skinny. The focus of your journey really should be overall health, not being Instagram skinny. Don't compare yourself to my body or to anybody else's body. You are beautiful and I believe in you. All right, guys, I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.